councillors and members of the public in the gallery and watching our proceedings online. Welcome to our Budget Council meeting. Please remain standing while I invite my chaplain, the Reverend David Chester, to say prayers. Thank you. We pray for the borough of Wirral, for all who work here, for the work of the mayor and councillors of this borough, and for all who bear responsibility for the ordering of our common life. For those who work with and for our children and young people in education and recreation, for a vision of community which inspires our labours, and for the use of our gifts in the service of God's people. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, has shown us that the secret of happiness is a heart set free from selfish desires, help us to look not only on our own care, but also on the needs of others, and inspire us with such fair dealing and further feeling as may show our common citizenship in you. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, David. Please be seated. First item on the agenda is apologies for absence. I've been notified of the following apologies. Councillors Liz Gray, Dave Mitchell and Adam Sykes. Are there any further apologies? Councillor Bill Davis. Councillor Bill Davis, thank you. Item two, declarations of interest. <coughs> Councillors, you are asked to consider whether you have any disclosable pecuniary and or any other relevant interest in connection with any matters to be determined at this meeting. And if so, to declare it and state the nature of such interest. I would remind members that Section 106 of the Local Government Finance Act 1992 applies to this meeting. So that if a member present is two months or more in arrears with their council tax, they must declare that to the meeting and must not vote on any budget or council tax item. Any member who fails to comply with that requirement will be committing a criminal offence. Can I now ask members to make the declarations and remind you that you should state the item number and title and the nature of the interest in question. Councillor Jeff Green. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. With regards to the uh, education budget by nature, my wife's important. <coughs> Councillor Les Rowlands. Uh, the same again, uh, Mr Mayor. My wife's uh, employed by the education department. Councillor Phil Gilchrist. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As a school governor of Old Southfield High School and Millfields Primary, uh, that applies to me. I wonder if it applies to other school governors and will welcome Mr. McCall's advice. Director. Members, if you wish to make that declaration for the public record, that's a matter for you. Uh, but our view is that Nexus isn't strong enough. Uh, and that item is in your register of interest, so that would save council time not to do it. Any further? Ah, oh, Councillor. Sorry, this is Adrian Jones. I'm so sorry, Adrian Jones. Do you realise that's what I'm a school governor, and my daughter's a teacher within the borough. Thank you. But she gives me no money. <laughs> Councillor Christine Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My daughter's also employed by the Chair. Councillor Christina Musbrat. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the trustee of the Joseph Mayor Community Partnership, Joseph Mayor Trust. Thank you. And Councillor Ronaldi. Uh, my daughter's employed by the Local Authority. Thank you. Oh, and Councillor Mike Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My daughter's a teacher and my Another daughter works in the um, NHS. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> the further declarations. So, move on to item three, Mayor's announcements. Under item three, I have the following announcements to make. I do not have to remind members that they must be seated in their allocated positions to vote and that proxy voting is not allowed. We are required by law to hold a recorded vote on budget matters. Following discussion at the Standards and Constitutional Oversight Committee last week, and for such recorded votes, we will do this by a roll call of names. When you hear your name called, and for the benefit of those watching online, please turn your microphone on, speak clearly, 
indicate your voting choice. Once you have voted, ensure your microphone is turned off. We will not be using the electronic voting system this evening. Thank you. <laughs> Item 4, approval of minutes. We are asked to approve the minutes of the council meetings held on 10th of December 2018 and 25th of February 2019 at pages 1 to 44 of the supplementary pack. That's pages 1 to 44 of the supplement. I will move uh, the approval of the minutes as a correct record. Do I have a second? Second. I will take a vote as a show of hands. All those in favour? Those against? I think that vote is carried unanimously. Yes, Councillor Lewis. Mr. Mayor, can I ask, uh, in view of what's happened today, can you confirm the status of Councillor Bird? Is she a member of the Labour Group, please? I'm not aware of anything on that nature, Councillor Lewis, and I'm told by the Director of Law and Governance is not relevant. Item 5 is petitions. Item 5 on the agenda. Sorry, item... Mr. Yes, Councillor. I agree. Those against? <laughs> Again, I think that is unanimous. So, item 8, the council budget. 
We now move to the council budget and the council proposals made by sorry, and the budget proposals made by the cabinet on 18th of February 2019, pages 101 to 299 of the agenda. I invite the leader of the council to formally move the cabinet's budget resolution as set out in the council agenda on item 8, noting the revised budget resolution now incorporating the police and fire authority precepts at item 8 brackets 1 on pages 45 to 59 of the supplementary papers pack. Councillor Phil Davis move. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Councillor George Davis seconded. We have submissions in respect to the budget from two other political group leaders. I now invite Councillor Lewis to formally move his budget objection under item 82 at page 61 of the supplementary papers pack. Councillor Lewis. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Is it a seconder? Second. Councillor Leslie Reddy seconded. I now invite Councillor Gilchrist to formally propose his budget amendment under item 83 pages 63 to 66 of the supplementary papers pack. Councillor Gilchrist to move. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Second. Councillor Stuart Kelly seconded. Budget debate. The Council would now debate the Cabinet's budget resolution and the budget objection and the budget amendment together. I remind members that at the end of the debate a series of recorded votes, votes will be required. I now invite the Leader of the Council to speak to the Cabinet's Budget Resolution for up to 15 minutes. Councillor Phil Davis. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Mr Mayor. Mr Mayor, it's my pleasure to move the Cabinet's recommendation uh, on the Budget tonight. Mr Mayor, tonight is the final Budget I will move as Leader of the Council and as a member of this Council. Uh, and I have to say I have a feeling of, a real feeling of deja vu. Um, we, are, we are stuck in the ninth year of austerity uh, under uh, Tory government. No clarity about ending the crisis in social care. Uh, no roadmap to fair funding of local government uh, once our revenue grant disappears in 2021. And this makes um, it almost impossible to plan ahead and puts huge pressure uh, on maintaining those discretionary services such as leisure, highways, when an increasing proportion of our budget um, is being used to deliver our statutory services, especially around social care. And it's against this, I think, rather bleak national context that uh, I move the, our budget for 2019-20. Our starting point, Mr Mayor, is to continue to deliver our three priorities in the rural plan, protecting vulnerable people, growing the economy, improving the environment, and the 20 pledges which spell out how we will deliver those priorities. In the summer, uh, we'll have a detailed report to Council on progress on our 20 pledges, but I uh, am pleased to say as we move into the final year of the, the five-year um, plan, uh, I'm very confident that we will deliver on the overwhelming majority of our pledges. And this is a, a real tribute to the hard work of this administration, and most particularly uh, a tribute to the excellent uh, staff that we employ in this local authority, uh, providing superb services day in, day out. And clearly the world's changed since the World Plan was agreed in 2015 and we will need a new um, plan for post-2020, which again uh, will be debated during the summer. So the medium term financial strategy, which is the in tonight's budget paper, sets out the key elements of our approach in setting a, a balanced budget for, uh, for next year. Very briefly, there are three main strands. First of all, generating additional income to replace the some 200 million which the government has cut from our budget since 2010. Um, the establishment of uh, things like the World Growth Company, I think is the best example of how we are acting in a more commercial way to bring new revenue into the council's coffers. Growth Company uh, will generate 5 million next year and more than 50 million over the next 10 years. Uh, over the next year, we will add more than uh, £10 million to the local economy through our community wealth building strategy. And this is based on the uh, Preston model and it's about retaining wealth within the borough. Uh, using redundant local authority assets uh, features heavily in the strategy. And a, a great example of this is the, uh, the new creative and digital businesses which will shortly locate to the former Treasury building, providing new jobs and uh, badly needed um, business rates to, to the council. 
Other ways of generating additional income include new housing through planning policy in the local plan, creating the climate to attract new businesses, and using our treasury management expertise to attract new income um, through interest on loans to other organisations. But going forward, I think the stark reality, Mr Mayor, is that unless we identify ways of bringing new funding into the council, then we will not be able to sustain our current spending and services will wither on the vine or uh, ultimately will close. We desperately need to avoid the fate of councils like Northamptonshire, who have literally gone bankrupt and run out of money. We need to make provision now. The second way in which we're maintaining services is through securing better value for money by joining things up. We're doing a lot of work in this, in this area and there are plenty of, exam of examples um, of this going on. Uh, for example, the Rural Youth Hub uh, has cut youth offending by some 30%. The transfer of our adult social care social workers to the NHS means that patients no longer have to tell their story multiple times to several different professionals. The 3,500 jobs that we've created through supporting the private sector through our partnership with the Chamber of Commerce. We're also achieving better value for money through our focus on prevention and early health in services such as children's and families. And we're promoting independence, community empowerment and resilient communities through the World Together initiative. The third leg of our strategy for the budget to deliver better services, greater efficiencies. And this does require quite often new ways of working. Perhaps the best example of this is the excellent work that's been done in children and families through the improvement programme. And I'm confident that we will be able to move out of intervention uh, within the near future. And I just want to take uh, an opportunity to pay tribute to Bernie Rooney, Cabinet Member for Children's Services, who's done a fantastic job uh, in turning that program around. It's Bernie, it's been a, a real pleasure for me to work with you over the last few years. Um, Mr Mayor, other examples um, uh, of new ways of working include the digitalisation agenda, which has enabled residents to do business with us online. Um, and next year, we will continue our programme of reviewing all 200 of the council's services to achieve more efficiencies. I am pleased, Mr Mayor, that the bucket budget package includes improvements to our highway services, totaling £8 million. This is part of our agenda for what I've called getting the basics right, and it's being delivered by this Labour Council. So in summary, a key theme of next year's budget is to put measures in place to ensure that when government funding ends in a few years' time, we'll still be able to deliver good quality services. Now clearly, we're hoping there will be a new government by then that has a more enlightened view of funding of local services, but in the meantime, we we need to really double our efforts to look at new funding opportunities. So, Mr Mayor, in conclusion, the budget I'm moving today is balanced, sustainable and legal. It does not require any closure of services. It will ensure that key frontline services continue and improve. It uh, protects our workforce and does not require any compulsory redundancies. And it comes with a clear labour stamp through progressive policies. And they particularly include the Rural Growth Company, as I mentioned, our community wealth building strategy, our help for some 9,000 low income households through our council tax reduction scheme. It puts more money in the pockets of our staff through reducing the number of uh, days of unpaid leave. And it provides vital support for the communities and businesses in New Ferry Mr Mayor, unlike this uncaring government, we will not desert that vital community that has suffered so much since that tragic accident in 2017. Finally, Mr Mayor, I'd like to put on record my thanks to those residents who took part in the consultation on the budget, to all those elected members on scrutiny committees who looked at the budget in more detail, my Labour group colleagues who have worked tirelessly throughout the year on ensuring that we were able to deliver a balanced budget. Finally, a massive thanks to all our staff who, as I said at the start of my co comments, do a fantastic job day in day out delivering excellent services to the residents of this borough. Mr Mayor, it's my pleasure to move and recommend this budget to Council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Schools budget. Council
Councillor Bernie Mooney, I now invite you to speak in respect of the school's budget. You have up to seven minutes.
the minimum funding guarantee of 0%, which is, which is what we've been working for, uh, for Willow Schools for 2019-2020 is approved to provide additional protection and to, um, uh, to stabilise the funding and to ensure that no school can lose pupil funding unless <coughs> there is a reduction in pupil numbers, ensuring that no pupil is disadvantaged <coughs> on the world, and uh, that the uh, continuing contributions and combined budgets should be 875,600 in 2019-2020, and that any remaining uncommitted dedicated school grant reserves remain at um, at the end of 2018 and 19, should be used um, as a contingency for high support, uh, for high needs, pressures in future years. And number five is the council calls upon the government to stop cutting the grant and move to, um, to start funding every single child in the world appropriately, because every child in the world deserves a good start. Thank you. <coughs> anti-government rhetoric, pages of anti-government rhetoric and complaints about austerity, followed, as always with the Labour Party budgets, by the continued implementation of that austerity, while throwing at the same time a few hundred thousand pounds on programmes to keep the left wing of the Labour Party happy, or at least to try to, and as usual funded by a council tax rise, where it's always below the maximum they're allowed before they have to trigger a referendum to ask political people what they think of their proposals. Mr Mayor, the Cabinet and the Leader tonight have given us their proposals and they have the nerve to tell us they are focused on getting value for money for every pound that is spent. The Cabinet tell us they will spend less, for example, on consultants. Yet in the same month that the Cabinet agreed their budget, they were spending £300 a day on an interim project manager. They were spending £275 a day on yet another communications lead. They were spending £275 a day uh, on a budget project manager. They were spending £719 a day on an assistant director. And to cap it all, they created a new consultant role of programme director for the local plan, whose job description is to provide leadership, direction and accountability, all for a bargain price of £850 a day. Mr Mayor, that is a classic case of contracting out the responsibilities. We thought it was the Cabinet's responsibility to provide leadership, direction and accountability. Clearly, for £850 a day, they have contracted that out as well to the private sector. Mr Mayor, judging by recent performance, it will be progress if the, all these consultants are simply paying their taxes and trading legally. The Leader of the Council and his Cabinet tell us that they are open to ideas and that scrutiny committees have a role to play. Mr Mayor, one of our scrutiny committees chaired, like all our scrutiny committees by a Labour councillor, resolved that Brackenwood should be included in the plans to reimagine our leisure facilities. Perhaps the leader, when he has his right of reply later in this debate, can tell us if he has accepted the scrutiny committee's request, or if, as usual, he will ignore that recommendation. At the last cabinet council meeting, Mr Mayor, the leader of the council berated his opponents on his plan for a golf resort telling the rest of us to wait for the facts before we make a decision. It's a pity he didn't wait for the facts before spending millions directly on this folly. And talking of follies, the failing Worldview newspaper, which let's, let's not forget, half the borough doesn't get and the other half doesn't want. By any measure of value for money, should it, it should be scrapped. Instead, under the Cabinet's proposals, having already spent £554,000 on the world, the detail in the Cabinet's budget reveals increasing the amount that is being spent on the world view. 
Mr. Mayor, the Conservative group is asking Council to reject the Cabinet's proposals this evening. Stop wasting the taxes and business rates paid by our residents and instead use the money you have to deal with the issues the taxpayers are telling us are their priorities. The broken streetlights, the potholes, the road safety around schools, cleaning the streets, tackling the dog fouling and doing it at the same time without giving Kingdom Officer the right to lurk in the bushes. Supporting local businesses to create the jobs and apprenticeships that people need instead of slapping fines on them at every opportunity. Mr. Mayor, and I will refer back to this, uh, refer back to this from the first debate I had with the Cambridge Group. In its 1994 best seller, which I have to say the Leader of the Council has now gladly signed for me, which has at least doubled its value to five pounds. <laughs> In his best seller, Mr. Mayor, the Leader of the Council, if anyone wants to get it by the way, it's called The Inheritance in Public Policy and it was published in 1994. In that book, the Leader of the Council tells us on page 144 that politics is meant to be a happy art. Yes, yes, some laughter in the Labour group. Page 131, that the opposition's job is to oppose, and most tellingly on page 132, that an administration does not want to use party discipline to ride roughshod over critics in cabinets or on the back benches. That's not what we heard at the last council debate. Mr Mayor, where did it all go wrong? At the last council meeting, we heard from Councillor Needham, and we watched as not a single Labour councillor gave her the credit that she deserved for 28 years' service to the people of Rock Ferry. That was seven days ago. Mr Mayor, if seven days is a long time in politics, and since last Monday, we have now seen, as we've heard, a deputy leader of the council, and by all accounts, somebody who was destined to be the next leader of the Labour group, barred from standing again. Mr Mayor, I'll be the first to admit that Councillor Mooney and I have a, a love-hate relationship, mainly that she loves to hate me. <laughs> nobody, Mr Mayor, nobody but the most cold, calculating and heartless of our councillors, of all of her opponents, can feel anything but sadness for the way that the Labour Party has treated her. And it is with the utmost dignity and respect that she leaves this council chamber in May, with everybody, well, pretty much everybody in this council chamber sharing that view, I would hope. For a member, Mr Mayor, if we look at for a member of the group opposite, in Councillor Moon's own group, to say on Facebook that the people of Liscard now have justice after this, after this debate, after the, the vote in the Labour group, is quite frankly as obscene as it is wrong. We'd be more impressed, Mr Mayor, if you were taking, taking to social media to condemn the anti-Semitism that we've seen today. It is now blindingly, pain, painfully obvious to all but the most deluded that remaining moderate, sensible members of the Labour group have no future whatsoever. For them, Mr Mayor, the best days are behind them, and this Labour group's budget, for all its fault, is their swan song. If they don't take action now, each and every one of them will be complicit and responsible for what happens next. And, Mr Mayor, we know what happens next. A Labour group under a militant, hard-left leader, playing to their base, causing chaos in council services, frightening away investors in some pointless attempt at conflict with the government. To quote somebody in the Labour Party from 30 years ago, Mr Mayor, they'll start with far-fetched resolutions. These will then be pickled into a rigid dogma, a code, before ending in the grotesque chaos of a Labour council hiring taxis to scuffle around the borough, handing out redundancy notices to its own workers. Mr Mayor, I ask council to reject this budget. <laughs> It's now to the Liberal Democrat Budget Amendment. Councillor Gilchrist, you have up to 15 minutes to speak to your Budget Amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Those of us who have compared last year and this year, have a look at the figures that's presented to us. Many of the figures came rather late as a result of the fire authority, but this budget tonight, taking the fire, the police, and the Merseyside precepts or the Merseyside precepts together means that band A taxpayers have a £60 rise, band B £70, band C £80, give or take a few pence. So it's about a 5% rise for many people.
people when you take the whole set of circumstances together. Some of those circumstances are in our control, some of those circumstances are not in our control, and I'll go through some of those issues. We were asked about making representations to the government, because I've done that, Mr. Mayor, and I'm grateful that the Council has in fact sent a letter as part of the consultation. I sent a letter to the Minister Rishi Sunak and received a reply on the 13th of February. And we really want a simpler, transparent way of awarding money to local councils. We want one that is fair. We'll probably come back to that later in the debate. As I understand, as the leaders outlined, there are considerable difficulties in future years. We need some certainty because we don't know what we're getting. I'm grateful that our officers wrote a detailed account to the ministers on the 21st of February. Our officers produced a response to each of the government's questions. And if members haven't read that, I would suggest that we do, because we need to get our case across on behalf of local government in general. Those of us who read first when it comes out, or look at your website, the headlines this week were Time to Plug Funding Gap. And each week, the Conservative leader of the LGA sends us emails about what he's trying to achieve, persuading the government on behalf of local government. We can only hope that Lord Porter and all those speaking up on behalf of local councils get some weight behind them and their voices are heard. Turning to things we have some control or involvement in, I'll do with the police precept. In the December meeting, I asked that the Commissioner should come to see us to explain her budget proposals. A number of us were delayed at a planning meeting, but we're grateful to hear the proposals when the Commissioner came here. We appreciate that there will be paid for in the rise in our council tax, funding for 40 new officer posts, and that the other savings that will be made will have put 40 officers uh, in place that were due to be lost. So we're grateful for those actions. It also takes time to train people, so I'm not sure which point they will arrive during the year. But the police commissioner has set about replacing some of the cuts that have been made, and I believe the costs to cross Merseyside to do that are £9.9 million to restore those officers. Members of the council a few moments ago gave Councillor Mooney a standing innovation. I have served with Councillor Mooney on the Improvement Board for some time now. I want to make sure that members of this council appreciate the heartfelt determination that Councillor Mooney has in the interests of children. The way in which she's tried to move the service to deal with early health and early problems to tackle what's called the toxic triangle. The triangle I have always on that committee of drugs and poor health and educational standards and all the pressures on children's social work. As a result of the Improvement Board and the dedication that Councillor Mooney has shown, the Council did put a lot more money into children's services. And of course, that's funded by a number of means, including the sale of land. So we are anxious that that program of work is successful. And I pay tribute to Councillor Mooney for doing that work while I've been on the board with her. <coughs> and to her commitment to do all she can between now and the end of May. It seems that the council, vast members, vast numbers of members on this council support her work. It's a pity that our local ward doesn't understand it or give credit for it. Last year when we discussed the budget, I listed some things we needed to do, which was create an effective children's service to tackle ineffective and wasteful spending on publicity, to tackle wasteful spending on consultants, and that we needed meaningful reporting. During this year's process, in the minutes, we have the Leader of the Council paying tribute to the scrutiny committees and their ideas being incorporated, it says in the minutes, where appropriate or they're noted. As the member has already said, it's unclear what is the status of Brackenwood Golf Course because members were anxious that it shouldn't be isolated, it might be part of a package of future, uh, future scheme, that it was at risk if it was out isolated on its own. So I'm a little troubled by the phrase where appropriate in the, the description and the narrative of that minute. <coughs> Talking of scrutiny, I also want to thank Councillor Sullivan, who now sits as an independent member, because he was at least prepared to come to Easton 
and hear the complaints of the businesses in the country park when car parking charges were introduced. I visited that car park this weekend with Councillor Caribia. There were 12 vehicles in it, 24 vehicles outside it up the road, another dozen or so vehicles in front of one of the local hostelries. So I don't think those charges have worked out the way the council would have liked, or a majority would have liked. It's <coughs> about putting our own house in order. I'm sorry for this, this account, but I have for the last fortnight been trying to find out what is the cost of the communications division that produces World View and other publications. I got from the internal phone book on the 24th of January a list of, not blamed, who worked there. We have up to 20 staff. Three digital and creative officers. This sounds like that uh, 12 days of Christmas and a partridge in a pear tree. But there are three digital creative officers, two news content officers, a news content officer for marketing will, two communications and engagement managers, a digital and creative manager, two campaign managers, a campaign officer, a creative digital communications lead, the Communications and Investment League, and of course the Head of Communications. I probably missed some somewhere because there's a web editorial officer and assistant graphic designer. Can we really as members justify that substantial investment in those staff? Somebody will have to answer for that and give us a decent explanation because I can't find one. During the year, we have heard some of the effects of some previous initiatives and savings. And one of the issues we have is monitoring our budget. It was only recently that we heard that last year's rise in garden waste charges actually led to us having £200,000 reduced income. So sometimes ideas backfire. Councillor Lewis has talked about the interims and consultants. The list that went to the business committee last November listed 46 of them that had been in post over about two years. I asked for the page £772 a day. Of those 46, 27 were involved in children's services. So I don't grumble about that work, as I've mentioned, because the service needed turning around. What has been apparent is the substantial salaries paid to some of these temporary staff. You know, when this weekend there was a lot of joking about Chris Grayling, some members of, members of Parliament have sought to cut his pay in, in a gesture some time ago. But he's a man that's cost us 33 million in terms of tumble um, ferry charges for compensation. That's money that could have come to local government. He's cost us a disaster over the probation service. That could be reinvested and come to local government. And I'll just touch on Brexit. Because Mrs. May, in October 2018, said this, and please don't fall out at once, but she said, when we've secured a good Brexit deal for Britain, at the spending review next year, we will set our approach for the future. So our hands are in the hands of those running the spending review. We will do what we can locally, and we have some criticisms, of course, of the way some things are managed. We have some doubts about the purchase of the cinema, have some worries about how public health is going to manage with the budget proposals. Uh, we do, of course, recognise that Councillor Whittingham now has a bicycle. So I'm grateful for the attention that is now being given to pothole funding because last year £45 million was paid in compensation across England for cyclists.